The problem statement tells us the angular frequency and the amplitude, so we know what the maximum speed is. We can solve part A by writing down an expression for the block's total energy, the sum of its kinetic and potential energies, and setting that equal to the maximum potential energy. When these two terms are equal, we can write them as twice, either one of them, doing it this time as twice the instantaneous potential energy, and solving for the magnitude of the position, gives us the amplitude over root 2. If we do it again, this time rewriting the two terms in the middle as twice the instantaneous kinetic energy, and replacing Vmax with the expression above, we find the speed when the kinetic and potential energies are equal is equal to omega times a over square root of 2. So that's the magnitude of position and speed when the two energies are equal. Part B asks us how many times per cycle this occurs and the time in between occurrences. If we plot a cosine wave, where this is the time axis and this is the position axis, we can mark the four locations where the magnitude of the position equals a over root 2. And those are approximately shown here. These top two values have a position of a over root 2, and these bottom two have a value of minus a over root 2. So we see there are four times per oscillation where the kinetic and potential energies are equal to each other. To find the time in between occurrences, we'll call this one t1, we'll call this time t2, we'll evaluate those times, and find delta t, the time in between them. To find the times, we first write the position as a function of time, a cosine omega t, with phi set to 0, and set the position x equal to a over root 2. That occurs at time t1. Canceling the a's and taking the inverse cosine of both sides shows us that omega times t1 equals pi over 4. The angular frequency omega is 2 pi over the period, capital T, so we can solve for t1 and it equals 1 eighth of the period. We do the same thing now for the position equal to minus a over root 2. The inverse cosine of minus 1 over root 2 is 3 pi over 4. And again, replacing omega with 2 pi over the period, we find that t2 equals 3 times the period over 8. And delta t then is just the difference between these two and that works out to one quarter of the period. We know from symmetry then in the cosine function that all the other time differences between occurrences will be the same. Now let me erase this so we have room to solve part C. Part C asks what fraction of the total energy is kinetic and potential when the block is halfway to its maximum displacement. The total energy is the kinetic plus the potential so we can write this for the kinetic. That's 1 half k a squared minus 1 half k x squared, where x is half the amplitude. Simplifying the algebra here shows us that the kinetic energy is 3 quarters of the total energy when the displacement is half the amplitude. That means that the fraction k over e is three quarters. Three quarters of the energy is kinetic. Because the total energy is the sum of kinetic and potential, the potential energy must take up the remaining one quarter of the total.